Hey, Tim Schatz here again with C4D Training. Today I have the first tutorial in a series on introducing you to MoGraph. So MoGraph is an optional module. It comes with the Studio Bundle, um, but I think it's really worth having. There's just so much you can do with MoGraph. So let's go ahead and get started. So one of the big things in MoGraph is the cloner object. So I'm going to go ahead and create a cube here and hit the T key and scale this down. And I can add my cube to a cloner in one of two ways. I can either come up here to MoGraph and while holding down the Alt key, select my cloner object and you can see it cloned them. Or if my object isn't selected, I can come up to MoGraph, cloner object, take my cube and drop it in. And if I select my cloner object, you can see here my mode is set to linear, count is set to three, and my position, this is the distance between the clones on this axis. So this is the position on the y-axis. So it's 50, they're 50 meters apart. And my cubes are obviously a little bit bigger than 50 meters, so in order to not have them overlapping, I can increase that. And then here with my count, I can go ahead and increase my count. And offset, what offset does is it offsets it by one, two, three, four clones, right? So here's the original. And if I do one, it's now moved them up basically one clone. Now two, three clones, etc. So I'm going to go ahead and set that back down to zero. So let's go ahead and increase our clones here so we get a few more and maybe decrease the space in between them so they're kind of almost touching. So now I can rotate these guys around. Reminds me of the uh, jugglers, you know, juggling things on their feet. Rotate them this way. I can also go over here to transform and I can rotate the clone, the actual whole cloner, so all the clones. I can rotate them this way. Rotate them this way. So really we're gonna focus on the object tab. Right now it's set to step mode of single value. We could say cumulative and now I rotate my step rotation, I can do my different step rotations and you know now it kind of reminds me of a little bit of like a you know robot arm or something right so if we do this and we do this then we've got this little bendy guy here we're affecting the x y and z axis so how far apart they are on that on those axes and then we can change their scale on any of the axes as well and we can rotate them in the different directions so that's with the linear mode so let's go ahead and take a look at the next mode which is radial so now you can see that my clones are now in a circle and all of the modes have a default. So this went from however many I had down to five and 50 meters. Those are the default settings. So we can change that. Make the radius bigger. We can change the plane on which they are cloned. So right now it's XY, we could do ZY, we can do XZ. We can change the start angle and the end angle if we don't want it to be a full circle. And again, we can offset it. So it's offsetting, this is offsetting by degrees. And then we can change the variation of the offset. Kind of get an interesting 
little animation going with that. And then there's the seed, and seed has to do with variation. It, it just changes, changes the way that the variation is applied. And so you can kind of change that just to get different effects. And next up, we have the grid array. And again, this one's default 3x3x3 three by three by three and 200 meters. These are the size of the grid array. So this whole grid array is 200 by 200 by 200. So if we increase the number of clones, it just fills up the grid array. And then in order to spread them out, we have to change the, the size of the grid array. We can also change this to object mode. And then we get this little box down here that says object. Well, I've got to put an object in here. So I'm going to go ahead and let's pick a platonic and, and make it nice and big. And I'm going to select my cloner. I'm going to grab my platonic and drag it into that box. And now what it does is it applies the clones to that object. And right now it's doing it on the vertex. So wherever there's a vertex, or a corner, it's going to put one of the boxes. I can do edge, and now it will put them in the edge. I can do polygon center, so now it's putting them in the center of each of the polygons for that platonic. The surface, kind of a random distribution, and we can, you know, we can increase that number so that it fills up the surface of that object. In case I haven't pointed this out, most boxes in Cinema 4D, they give you the ability, if you pull this over, it goes only goes to 100, but most of them you can go up higher. And then we can set it to volume, which basically fills up the shape. So those are the different modes for the cloner and how to use them. So next up, I'm going to show you a couple of examples using MoGraph. Let's say I want to create a stage maybe that has some columns around it, and then I want to have a circle of lights shining down on my stage. Well, I can create a cube here, make this guy a little bit wider, a little bit deeper. And then I can throw this into a cloner. So I'm going to hold down Alt and select Cloner Object. So now I've cloned three of these guys, and I'm going to bring them down so that they're touching. And I'm going to change their scale so that I get this little bit of a step effect. And then I'll just rotate this around and I can change my offset or my distance and create this little stair steppy thing. Okay. And now let's say I want to create some columns. So I'll come down here, create a cylinder, this guy up, a little bit skinnier. And I can throw my cylinder into a cloner as well. So holding down Alt and selecting Cloner Object. And so I go to my cloner object now and linear that maybe I want to do as linear. Maybe I want to have them kind of as a circle. So I'm going to go ahead and say radial. And that's definitely not the way that we want to do this. So there's there's kind of how I I'm, I want to do it, but maybe not quite in such a circle. So I'm going to make the radius quite a bit bigger. And if we look here, I'm going to increase the number and increase my, there we go. And here I have a start angle and an end angle. So it starts at zero. And I can change that. So I could start here and you know I could extend that if I wanted to or bring it back. So maybe I'm going to do something like that. And I think on my original cube I'll probably make him a wee bit bigger so it makes my stage bigger. And then I'll just move them back a little bit. And of course now they're off a little bit because I made them bigger so I'm going to come down here and change my distance there. And then I can take my cylinder cloner and drag that guy back. And now I've got my 
circle of columns. So you can see the circle of columns there. So now I can zoom in here. And you know, I could throw in a spotlight. Select like my light. And instead of Omni, I'm gonna make it a spotlight. Move it up here. Rotate it R key. And select like this little guy. Hold down shift, rotate it to 90 degrees. And then I'm gonna bring them up. So now I'm gonna go ahead and add my light to a cloner. So I'll go to MoGraph, hold down Alt, select cloner. And so now I have this cloner object with lights. Select my cloner, go to my object tab. Instead of linear, I wanna do radial. And I'm gonna come up here to the top so I can kind of see what I'm doing. And probably increase my, my radius. And probably easiest way to do this is I could come back here to this cloner and, and just copy what I'm doing here. So 322 and, and 19. So if I go to say three, just go about 300 and I'll bring in some more lights. And then again, change my start area. Maybe decrease the number. I don't think we need that many lights. And so now if I render this off, we have the circle of light shining down on our stage. Go ahead and add a, an Omni light in here just for some ambient light. There we go. So just, you know, three things made with cloner objects that are way easier than trying to duplicate them and move them into the right place. All right, that's it for this section of the tutorial. We'll continue on in part two of the introduction to MoGraph. Thanks for watching. I'm Tim Schetz, C4D Training.